Well, to be honest, Shirley, I'm a little disappointed. I, I introduced you as the female Tom Jones, and nobody threw a pair of shorts up on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I understand when Tom performs, that, that happens all the time everything, with young yes. ladies, right? Yes, everything. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Where Boston Wales are you from? Uh, the capital of Wales, uh, Cardiff. Cardiff? Yeah. Did you know Tom Jones from, uh, Not then, from Wales no. at all? No, I know him now. Yeah. How do you like that, that kind of tag or labels? A lot of performers like labels, some don't, where they call you the female Tom Jones. Well, uh, it's better than being called the Tigress from Tiger Bay. <laughs> because I was born in an area right? called Tiger Bay in, in Cardiff, which I suppose is the equivalent to Harlem here. Yeah. So it's better than Tigress of Tigress Bay, huh? Yeah, ti the Tigress from Tiger Bay, yeah. So the female Tom Jones. Uh, it's a great compliment because I, I think he's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, Wales has turned out a few sex symbols in the last Richard Burton's from Risley from Wales, is he not? Yes, yes. Huh? Yes. Is he not? Yes. Tom Jones? Yes. You don't find Richard Burton a sex symbol, right? No. Uh oh. What? Oh, Freddie does. Well, that's all. Right. <laughs> it's the only thing that's important as long as somebody. <laughs> Did you start singing professionally when you were in, in Wales? Yes, I. Uh, well, no, I, I was in amateur yeah. shows when mm -hmm. I was in Wales. I was discovered in Wales. Uh, then I went to London, and from there I became a professional singer. I went into uh, uh, a show called, funny enough, Hot from Harlem. Yeah. There's nothing hot about it, though. <laughs> there wasn't. There wasn't, no. <laughs> Didn't you have some crazy incident happen to you several years ago? Was that in England? Uh, uh, had to do with it. Somebody... I've had many crazy I'm incidents. I'm referring yeah. to the one. Somebody told me about somebody breaking into your, your standing outside your room oh. trying to break in, and the police showed up, and it was yes. just someone... Oh, that... I can talk about it today. I mean, uh, it happened 15 years ago, and... It was rather frightening at the time uh, because you you see this kind of thing in films and you read about it in books, but you never think that it could happen to you. And uh, I was um, 20, and that gave, gives away my age, doesn't it? It really does, uh, yes. <laughs> well, if anybody has basic mathematics, that's pretty well, pretty well he does it. Anyway, um, I was going with a boy, and I decided that uh, to break it off, you know, right. a 20-year-old do sometimes and he wouldn't have it so this particular night he broke into my hotel room with a gun and uh, was just blasting everywhere through the walls through the doors into the phone because he told me to ring his mother to tell his mother that he was going to kill me and then kill himself and then the sore mother loser, isn't he? he was a sore loser <laughs> yes and uh, of course naturally the mother didn't believe him and uh, he grabbed the phone from me and shot into the phone, believing that he would shoot his mother. You know, was, I think it was a bit... Different. Yes, that's... So, then, of course, before I knew where I was, uh, the wardrobe was up against the door. I, it's, cra it's incredible where crazy people get strength, you yeah. know, when they're crazy. And th this wardrobe went up against the door, the trunk... I was going to Australia the night, be uh, the, the day after. And so the trunk with all my, my gear went on top of the wardrobe, etc. And uh, then suddenly there was something like 30 policemen and five Alsatian dogs. And of course, as you know, English policemen are not armed. So um, being as he was, they had to go to Scotland Yard to get a special permit to get a gun. In the meantime, I could have been dead. Or, you know. Police had to go to get the gun? Yes. <laughs> you got the gun, Harry? No, I thought you had it. <laughs> Want to go get one? That's weird. <laughs> It is very weird. And they cleared uh, out the people on either side of, of my room and opposite. You know, because he was going crazy. You know. Anyway, this went on for two hours, and I, I managed to, to, to uh, keep it from killing me by keeping my cool and playing Frank Sinatra records. Thank you, Frank Sinatra. And, uh, <laughs> and Judy Garland, the late Judy Garland, and, and thanks to her, too, because Played the records uh, and... it kind of soothed him down. And at that time, my favorite drink was Dram Uh I don't have to tell you that I've never touched it since. Oh. And um, he kind of, one moment, did a Russian roulette thing, you know, <laughs> and said, uh, will you take me back? Because if not, I'm going to kill you. And of course, I said, no, I, I will not take you back, and <clears throat> like that. But uh, there was no bullet there because he'd moved the barrel, you know, that oh. thing. Well, anyway, I, I passed out because I thought that he had shot me. <laughs> that would just about do it, I think, anyway. <laughs> anyway, after two hours, he said, uh, would you like to go just like that, you know? 
And I said yes, and he made me uh, get on my hands and knees and, and, and beg to, to be let, let free, and, which I did. You know, I would have done anything at that moment. You know, I was... beg. I would have got up and done cartwheels, <laughs> danced anything at that time. Do we have? Do I have to? Well, anyway, it all worked out all right. Yes, I'm except getting... the, the Alsatian dog thought I was the victim, and he attacked me, and that was the last one. I the really did you? pass out, yes. Well, it certainly ended happy. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back after a word from one of our sponsors. <laughs> 